Hi, I'm Derek Hilton, and my channel is all about photographing and filming wildlife. Now, what have I got in store for you today? Let's take a look. Well, hi, and how are you going out there? I've stepped out of my office today to go for an excursion on the hunt for the broad tooth rat. And it's an endangered species. I've come out into this forest, not far away from where I live, about 7 k's. And I'm just stopped after walking for about 20 minutes or so, just to get a feel of the place. Start getting into the hunting mode. And how do we go about looking for an endangered animal in thick forests like this? I've got lots of bracken, thick undergrowth. Well, this is what I'm after. Logs on the ground. Keep trying to look for them as they're going along in this thick scrub. Not easy, but I run underneath them like that. Well used tracks, plenty of cover from predators such as kookaburras, hawks, owls, stuff like that. Safe environment for them to get from one area to another. It's a well used track this one, but there's no sign of any broad tooth rat here or any swamp rat neither. The only poo I could find in there is the uh, dusky antichinus. So once I find what I'm after, so I come across one like this, nice spot, uh, there's plenty of evidence of the possibility of a broad tooth rat with its poo. It's supposed to be a lot greener than the uh, swamp rat's poo because of what they eat. So if I get some fresh stuff, that'll be great. I'll be able to identify it within a reasonable amount yeah, of uh, degree. And then what I'll have to do is set up a trail cam. So trip camera will capture anything going past here on a spot like this. And uh, that'll save me sitting here for hours, days, weeks, months, and not getting anything. So it just saves time. Helps me to home in on where an animal might be, is uh, living. So yeah, that's what we're looking for. I'm not quite there yet. I'm right down at the creek. I've got to watch out for snakes because it's that time of year. So yes, got to be careful. Got to be prepared for those sort of things. And we'll have a look at that after. What I've got in my kit to uh, help me if something goes wrong break my leg quite easily or something like break my arm falling. It's a tough environment, it's quite steep on this side. So yeah, you just need to have things in place. But we'll look at that after. Getting a little bit closer to the environment that I think that they might sort of uh, choose. A little bit damper flatter down on near the creek. Got some bigger logs running across here. Lots of trails coming through. Very, really well used. Not seeing their poo though, but it's a little damper, which is what I think they might prefer. But might not be. Might like it a bit drier. But, uh, I've got to try these things and it's just my, these are my own instincts. This is what I think they might like. Swamp rat. The swamp rat's a little bit like that. Looks a little bit damper, but it does go into a drier sort of thing as well. The you know, problem why they're so endangered is feral cats and foxes. And us chewing up their environment too. But they're not helping. And I've just come across the rosella's feathers, it's bones and stuff in here been eaten by thinking that it might be a fox. Well, I'm not doing too well down on the creek, except for uh, birds and stuff flying around the place. Lots of grey fantails, roofless fantails as well. Um, yeah, not much success down here, so I'm going to 
Get back up there, up this log, back up along the hill here. Just keep searching. So, uh, yeah, we'll get going. And that's where I'm going up. What did I say about breaking my leg? Trying to do silly things with uh, holding the camera and having it going while I'm walking across logs. And uh, yeah, nearly broke my leg. <laughs> Alright, turn the camera off and I won't do that anymore. Well, there's something of interest here. Someone's marked it with this bit of tape. And this would be a streamer. For your party events, stuff like that, paper stuff. Uh, the colour's gone out of it now. Uh, so it's been here for quite some time. Might be parks and lands that are interested in something here. Maybe a certain type of plant, an orchid or something like that. Or more likely, maybe checking possums at night. Seeing where they can find uh, ones like more rarer possums. Your pygmy possum, something like that. That's what I've got to do myself. I've got to mark my trail. If I find something of interest and I want to come back to the spot, it's going to be very hard for me to try and remember exactly where I was unless I mark it. Because the scrub here is about two metres high to 1.8. Uh, yeah, somewhere around there. So it's very awkward to see where you were a mile in that direction to the track something like that same in either direction that's going to be very hard for me to find this spot unless i mark it so that's cheap probably 50 cents or something like that in australia i'll put it in my backpack and just cut it around with me all the time mark it up high you know, i could use um utilize some you know sticks in the ground like that little shrubs it's easy to see, it'll be blown in, in the breeze or on a gum tree like that. It's got nice thick bark. Get. Oh. Oh, here we go. I can get, say, a twig like that and it's got those uh, other twigs coming out. So when I push through there, that's not going to come off with a breeze. If I just use a straight twig, it'll just come off, but that'll help lock it. And uh, shove it into the bark, that'll go in really easy. And I can just do that along the trail, keeping it up high on a straighter line, straight back to where uh, the track is. And just remember where I come out of the track, just in case someone pinches or rips off my bit of tape or whatever have some things of some sort of a reference on the track of where I started from so then I can pick this trail up. Other things are too if you've forgotten to bring anything but you've got a packet of lollies in your bag they can be quite good too as long as they're quite bright have a right colour on them they'll help do the same trick shove it into the tree uh, with the stick and uh, some some lolly wrappers on the inside have that silver foil and that will really help you, guide you in. Uh, other ways are of looking at trees that are um, unique. <laughs> have something, uh, you know, a little bit broken on one side, they're leaning over and they've got a funny branch hanging off them or something like that. Take a photograph of it so that you can remember when you come back. I'm getting on a bit in life. And if I, uh, you know, memory's not that good these days. Might be a few weeks before I can get back here again. So I'll be scratching my head. I'm sure that was the tree. But to really make sure, got it on your camera still. You can just look at it and go, no, nah, that was a net. That's not the tree. And there's other trees. You know, just something of interest. Something that's different from everything around. That's easy to see. I've got these ones here. And I'm not quite sure whether they're a native or not. And there's just three of them. 
but this one's up towards the hill. I've come up from down from the creek it was getting too thick and hard to get through as you saw I slipped on that log skylarking um, so yeah I've come back up here to uh, refine a, an area a trail to get me further along uh, and that tree there is a very you know there's just nothing else around here like that I've got three of them but they're down the other two are down the hill this one's up here on its own so I could utilize that too this one I'm going back out onto the trail going as straight along as I possibly can mark something out there on the trail on say it's a bend and it's got a tree on it I'll try and remember that take a photograph of that as well so there's some tools to use um, parks and lands also and Shire um, environmental departments will use a spray can you can get ones that um, they just break down go away after um, you know a year or so uh, fluorescent colors like a pink just put it up high just one little spot work your way out on the straight line back so you can see easy another trick don't prefer that myself too bulky in the bag and it might go off in the bag too but it's something else you can utilize quick and easy as you go along that's what I use. I like to use these because they just pack in a bag, nice and light, cheap as chips. So enough of me waffling on. I'm going to keep going. I've checked the north side of this ridge, back down into the creek, come along quite a long way. I'm going to check out the southern side here now. Maybe it might be a better environment for them. So maybe that's where they might be. I found something else of interest and that is an orchid and I can't remember the name of it but I'll splash it across the screen for you. Just starting to come to the end of your orchid sort of season. Very hot and dry conditions so these are just sort of finishing up. Burst out of the ground. There's no leaves with these it's just the stalk straight out the ground. Flower. A lot of these normally have more heads coming out so they go for quite some time. Um, yeah they just come straight out of the ground there's like a bulb down the bottom. A beautiful looking flower. There you go. Got these hoverflies. A bit like a sound like a bit like a bee. I'm pretty sure they're some sort of blowfly type thing but they just hover. Like that, just sit in one spot. Might be able to pick out there, but uh, I'll film one if I can. Well, I'm on my way to go back home, and I've come across something that might help me out. There's a little tag up there on the tree, metal plate that says 32 in the white, and in the red part, it's, it's got a T on it. If I have a look at the biodiversity map when I get back home, it might be able to tell me what that code's for. Because you don't put a plate like that up unless you're really interested in an area and you want to keep it tagged for a long time. It's been there for quite some years. There looks a bit of rust and stuff on it. So could this be the spot where the broad tooth rat is? Doesn't look like it at the minute. I'm looking for a bit more greenery on the ground. Certain type of fungus and sages and things like that. So somewhere where it's a bit moister and I haven't really come across that type of environment anywhere so far. Even down at the creek it just didn't have the mosses and stuff that I was looking for that might help me out because uh, according to the poo book there's a, a trail and poo book so it shows you that what the tracks look like of an animal and also what its scats look like it's poo and it states that when broad tooth rats poo is new it's generally quite dark green so that's what I'm looking for a lot more greenery on the ground as I've come up 
finishing off of checked out my environment before I left further over that way, which is what I've been heading the whole time, doing a grid pattern, working my way back up this way. And it looks like the terrain changes quite dramatically further over, so that could be it. But it'll take me another half hour to get there and another two hours to explore that area or more. And I've run out of time. Um, I'm really hungry, getting grumpy, and uh, I'd like a bit of a rest, so that's going to help me. I'm going to put some things out so that I can find this spot again and then start myself off from here, work my way back that way could be good. Now when you sit down and think about how do I know to find my way around the place? How do I navigate so easy? I, I'm not one of those that gets lost easy. I find it quite easy to get through around the forest and stuff like that and find my way back out. Now one of the things that uh, tools that I have utilised was because I needed to know where the little rodent lives, I use the biodiversity map. Now, it doesn't pinpoint exactly where they are, but it's showing me all the trails, the creek, the roads that are around the place. So I knew my environment before I got here anyway. I know that there's a track down there, runs across that way, works its way back up the hill. And there's another one that comes from the road, runs all the way through. So that's in front of me here, and that's where I'm heading now. Back down that way is the creeks. There's two creeks, they're only little things, but they run across and right back up through up the other hill, up the hill there at the back. So the road's across there, so sun's right above me now, and it was down there at the creek. So I know that east and west, that's north, back to civilization, go about three kilometres that way you've got. Uh, a dam and everything back that way and the main roads. If I keep walking up here, start to go up a steep hill, I know that I'm heading towards um, roads and stuff up that way as well. So I'm, I know my environment before I got here. I also, to make sure that the biodiversity map wasn't too much out of date, I looked at Google Map as well to back it up. So I knew my environment before I come and I can hear Someone talking, so I'm very close to the track that I'm after anyway. So, here's the sort of tools you're using. I, um, the lay of the land, how it's going, even though it's full of scrub, I know that dropping off down the hill is where the creek is here. It's quite flat across there. It's not building up, so it's definitely the creek's back that way. So I can follow the creek down. I've got the sun above me here. I know that it come across that way. So I'm right to go back there. If you if you get lost, if you're not that good at this sort of thing, probably not a good idea to be out here doing what I'm doing. If you're very easily lost, you're going to have to be very careful about how you go about uh, mapping your environment. Not panicking. Sit down, relax, get your thoughts back together. You know that in any direction, if you've looked on the map before you come, there's trails and all I've got to do is follow them. Someone's walking past, you can say, look, I was at a certain park, where is it? I can help you out there. So there you go. A bit more tips on uh, navigating through the scrub. And I'm waffling on, so I'm going to get going home. If I come across anything while I'm going, I'll uh, talk to you about it. But I'm very close to the trail, so I'm going to get going. Hopefully, I know where I'm going. And the trail is there. Now, before we go out, hacking around in the scrub, you need to be a good boy scout or a girl guide, whatever. You need to be prepared for any emergency situation that comes up. But we need to be lightweight, because we're going to be hacking through the scrub, so we need to be prepared, but not carry too much. Bum bag, always on my bum. Feel naked without it when I'm out hacking through the scrub. Got my batteries in there, mobile phone, uh, mozzie spray, keep those bloody mozzies off. Pocket knife, 
possibilities are endless with a pocket knife, what you can do with it, any sort of situation comes up, can help you out a lot. Splinters, you name it, you can do it with a pocket knife. Now the thing that's the most real important part in your your first aid kit, sort of, whatever you want to call it, your emergency situation, a whistle's fantastic. Just say, broken my leg, bone sticking out, I'm immobilised, I'm not going to be able to get out of this forest at all. So, I've rang up emergency services, they're on their way, but I couldn't pinpoint where I was, so I just gave them a rough description of where I am. And they're going to come through the forest and they're going to be yelling out my name, and I won't be able to answer them because I'll be in shock and I'll be like, uh, yeah. So you won't be able to yell out. You won't be able to get your voice to travel through the forest very far. So a whistle will do that without much energy at all. And it'll penetrate a hell of a lot better than what your voice will anyway. So you can grab someone's attention that way. Always have it in my bag, never go without it. Uh, also I've got torches, I've got I've got this one and a tiny little one. So that's good for looking in the logs like I was doing this morning, underneath the logs and stuff like that. Along the trails I could see whether there was scats, you know, poo trails here and there. Just really good for handy in general anyway. But at night, you're trying to get out through the forest, you injure yourself and you're really struggling. You've got the torch to get yourself out of that situation in the dark. The little one's really good as well. It's lightweight, don't even know that it's there in your bag. Very powerful though, that little LED one. Handy to have. Mobile phone, of course, everyone has them. No one goes anywhere without them. Not just good for phoning up your emergency service or the wife, whatever you're gonna use it for. They're good as a reflector, as you can see, quite reflective. Helicopter going over, catch its attention, help you out there. Uh, I've also got a fire app on this because it's in the, we're in the middle of our fire season and it'll alert me if there's fires within 15 kilometres of me. So give myself time to get out if I think there's going to be a hassle there and uh, get my bum out of there. Now also in my backpack, which is bulging to the seams these days, it's, un it's a 20 litre, but I need to go a little bit bigger. So we'll have to upgrade, it's been a great bag, it's nothing wrong with it, but it's just getting a bit small because I'm shoving audio gear in there now, and I've been extending my, my uh, camera gear, so yeah, it's starting to get a bit full. But just like this morning, need to be prepared, first aid kit, Lots of little goodies in there that I could use in all sorts of ways. So, again, it's a matter of being creative with what you've got, but staying lightweight. Enough stuff to get yourself out of trouble. So I've got a tourniquet there, so I can get my arm comfortable if I've broken it or dislocated or whatever, so I can get myself out of there comfortably. Lucky bands. Go away, mozzies. Need that mozzie spray on there. Lots of elastic bands. I take heaps with me wherever I go. Possibilities are endless with them as well. This time of year, snakes. A lot of them around. And like this morning, I was near the creek, so they are around. Get bitten on my arm, just on there, so I can uh, wrap, just put one there. It's enough pressure, that it's not cutting off all the blood supply, but it's enough to help me out, slow down the blood, uh, the poison running through my veins. So yeah, handy to have. Uh, now, also in here is a heat blanket. Same thing, helicopter going over, very reflective, like that. Get someone's attention, or even someone walking through the forest, you can't find your, uh, your whistle. If someone's walking through the forest, you might be able to flash them. So that's really handy. Different types of bandages for different types of things, uh, for wounds, um, to wrap around, to also stop the blood flow of uh, a big wound, or um, snake bite, something like that. 
uh, eye patches, lots of other bits and pieces in there that I can utilise for different situations. So yeah, short walk, but we have to be prepared. Something else that's really handy that's in my bag all the time anyway is the Better Beamer's flash extender uh, lens. So that extends the power of your flash, of course. Now these are really handy to start a fire, but high to fire season, can't do that. So I wouldn't be doing myself any favours lighting a fire if I got that broken leg with that bone sticking out. Keep yourself warm overnight. It wouldn't help me out anyway. All I'd be doing is uh, set myself alight, I think, and uh, burn in the forest and probably kill other people, just burn their houses down, whatever. Because, yeah, this is a bad year. It's really dry. But it's handy for those type of things. It lights instantly. It's not like a magnifying glass. It's much more powerful than a magnifying glass. It's pretty well instant as you go over what you want to light. It just starts straight away. Handy tool to have, it's also reflective so you can uh, get someone's attention with that as well. So, being creative again. And um, got a plastic bag in there that I put over my uh, camera. Got a Porter Bruce jacket for it as well. But uh, if it's really heavy rain, I like to put the plastic bag over it as well until it dies down and I can take it off again. But that is handy for um, wounds, wrap yourself up, get yourself comfortable, it starts raining, you can wrap that around it as well. So handy thing, all those little things, use your imagination, get yourself out of trouble. We could keep going on and on and on, but I think I've talked enough. And if you'd like to subscribe, click on the subscription button down there, you'll get notification whenever I do anything else. And if you'd like to go and have a look all the things I've been doing over the years on the left hand, your left hand side, just down there underneath the screen, there's a little icon take you to my channel, you can go and have a look at all the things I've been doing over the years like practicing at documentary making little ditties like this and the odd camera equipment reviews so, just remember if you don't do, you don't get so get out there and start photographing and filming my life, see ya